Hey everyone, welcome to Tech in 5 Minutes. Choosing the right web application structure sets the basis for the entire development. Watch this video till the end to find out which approaches are used by Google Maps, Twitter, and eBay. On this channel, we share our experience in the latest news in the world of tech. Before we start, make sure you are subscribed not to miss anything. Web application architecture describes the relationships between databases, servers, and applications in a system. All web applications are made up of two basic components, like what you see in the diagram. Client side, front end, the code that's stored in the browser and displayed to a user. Server side, the code that application runs on the server and uses to communicate with the hardware. Let's take a look at the most common approaches to implementing a server side. Monolithic architecture is a traditional approach to developing a web app with a single code base. The structure of an app is broken down into three basic web application layers. Presentation tier refers to user interface and interface-related processes. Logic tier describes the sequence of events that allow users to perform a useful action. Data layer that handles all the user data. Our team recommends Monolith for small products and services but it would be a risky choice for highly scalable platforms. The next approach is microservices. Each microservice is responsible for a single operation, which it performs flawlessly. Advantages of microservices approaches are isolation. Services can be developed independently. Scalability. A new service can be added at any stage of development. Flexibility. You can quickly change a structure or tech stack. Development process is simplified. We noticed the following disadvantages. Microservices require changes in the organization and communication. Without secure algorithms, information can end up leaking. If you are switching the existing app to microservices, you need to first figure out how to break the monolith architecture down to smaller features. We have recently made a detailed comparison of microservices and monolith. Check out the link in the description box. The next approach is serverless architecture. The serverless architecture uses servers to run a web application. However, they are not hosted by the company. Teams deploy an app on virtual servers, provided by vendors like Amazon, Google, or Microsoft. Advantages of serverless architecture. You don't care about the server. Businesses only have to pay for used server space. And finally, you get tech support. Which approach is obviously a better choice? Monolith, microservices, or serverless? Leave your thoughts in the comments section. Let's now review Jelvix team's best practices in web application architecture. Our developers made a checklist of the key principles of architecture development. One, find a solution that covers most of your goals. Two, if there's a way to build your app with a minimalistic architecture, choose the simplest option. Three, try to keep your architecture as lightweight as possible. Four, your architecture should be able to identify and repair issues on its own. Five, try to automate as many processes as possible. Six, pay attention to your data story. Let's take a look at strategies that web developers can choose to implement the client side of web development. The first option is progressive web apps. This is an approach to web app development where a page is essentially a hybrid between a website and a native mobile app. Advantages of PWAs? They are accessible in a browser. Mobile, as PWAs are developed with a mobile-first approach, and PWA can be accessed offline. Their disadvantages include limited browser support and limited use of native APIs. Two, single-page application. This is an app where all functionality takes place on a single page. SPAs dynamically rewrite page content in real time without changing the page itself. Advantages of SPA fast performance, flexible UX. Disadvantages, one, reminding users of saved updates. In multi-page web apps, developers can write before uploading events to remind users of unsaved changes. In SPA, there is no such straightforward mechanism. Two, some automation testing algorithms can't distinguish between AJAX changes. Therefore, tests take more time and are harder to prepare. Three, when a user first opens an SPA, the browser has to render the entire code to bring it to the client side. However, some frameworks allow lazy loading. 
We find SPAs perfect for utilities and small services. Google Maps, Google Drive, and Twitter apps rely on real-time updates. An SPA architecture allows delivering responses much faster. The final approach on our list is a multi-page application. MPAs represent a traditional approach to web application development. Every action of a user is reported back to the server. It then triggers the re-upload of the page. Advantages of MPAs? Rich functionality, SEO optimization, analytics. They are easily tracked and monitored by most analytical tools. Disadvantages? More complex back-end development, lower performance speed, complicated debugging. MPA's strong suit is delivering a lot of content. eBay and Magento are examples of multi-page web apps. And that's it. You already know the basics of a web app structure and understand the practical differences of each. Like this video if you found it useful. If you want a more professional outlook, you can contact the Jelvix team of Web App Architects. We provide software development, UI UX design, and testing services. Find our contacts in the description box. On this channel, we share only hot insights in the tech industry. So make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell button. Bye for now.